that's the uh, Child's Play 2 theme, actually, that I was playing a little bit of. And we have uh, <coughs> my dear friend and director of Child's Play 2, John Lafia, on the phone. John, are you there? I am here, Alan. You are? <laughs> awesome. Great to hear yeah. from you. Great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for calling in. Oh, you're more than welcome. It's, it's good to hear your voice. You it, know, uh, go ahead. No, I I agree. Uh, I was very happy that we had the opportunity recently to catch up after uh, almost three decades. Uh, <laughs> the last time you knew me at all, I was eight years old, and and now we got to actually sit over dinner as a couple of adults as childish as i may be at times at least uh i was able to contribute more to the conversation uh that was a yeah, fun time yeah. that was great to see you no that was really great and you know uh, you, you did look a little different a little different yeah a little bit you know, a little it's the beard if i shave my beard i look exactly the same if i shave it and grow a ball haircut you would never know the difference <laughs> God, that would be a sight. That would be crazy. That would that would really be wacky. So my memories, you know, uh, Child's Play 2, I definitely have more s solid memories than I do of the first one. I, I have memories of the first one, but they're kind of like flashes that have maybe been reinforced over the years. My memories of Child's Play 2 are a little more uh, vivid and, and concrete. And uh, I, I do remember, you know, Hang, having kind of a really like laid back, comfortable vibe between us on set, uh, not just me and you, but also Don and Christine. Uh, it, it seemed like we got the job done, and we were serious when we had to be. But it, it, it had like kind of a playful, relaxed vibe to me as an eight year old. Was that the same mm -hmm. impression you got, or was there more stress that that I was just not aware of? Yeah. No, no, I, I think that's a completely accurate description. And, uh, you know, that's more my style. I yeah. like to have a harmonious, happy set where everybody's having fun, working really hard, but, sure. you know, really en enjoying each other and, and, you know, getting the best from each other by having a collegiate kind of atmosphere. I, you know. That makes perfect sense to me. I think, yeah, I think I you know, there was a job. I waited, waited tables for eight years at a restaurant. And uh, it was it was laid back, but we all got the job done because we appreciated the fact that we got to be laid back. You know, like that yeah, inspired yeah, us yeah, to yeah. actually do the job right, you know? I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I personally just do not understand the kind of high stress, tension, conflict, heavy set mentality yeah you know i mean i've worked with people unfortunately that were not as cohesive uh, amic amicable as you guys you yeah know, and it happens but i do my best to diffuse that yeah you know well the, the just, child's I don't, I don't like it the child's play sets were certainly not uh short on opportunities for drama working with so many puppeteers trying to get this doll to look real and to, to move them in such a way with uh, you know as an actor, it's an interesting approach to the, those films because when you're actually sharing the screen with the doll, the, the one time that the doll finally does it right, that's the take they're keeping, you know? Uh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have too many options. It's like, Chucky yeah, nailed yeah, it, so yeah. we're moving on. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if it's, unless it's just a, a, a ridiculous gaff. Yeah. Right. Sure. Because sure. It just has to. Be, yeah. It just has to be. You know. Particularly if it's a two shot or a wide shot. Of course, if it's coverage on Chucky, then you can go just take a nap while we go take care of this for two days. Yeah. <laughs> or, or whatever it took sometimes to get those shots done. So, you know. So how much um, were you? Were you ever on set for part one? Were you ever there? I. Only they were doing, I don't know if they were pickups or just a very brief something over in um, the Culver City studio sure. yeah. backstage. And I came over for maybe an hour at the most, but I don't even remember it who was there or what was there. I don't remember seeing you there that yeah. short. Uh, what I was oh, going to ask no. was... Yeah. Uh, what what ha what was more difficult to work with animatronics of Chucky or animatronics of of um, man's best friend? Uh, the an animatronics of uh, Chucky for sure because uh, 
uh, Mad's best friend actually used very little animatronics. There were some, oh. but it was not. It was, but I can tell you this: there were many times on that using a real dog, and I wish it was a friggin' puppet. Really? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Matt, they can be really. It can really be a pain. Oh, I could imagine. And, uh, That's yeah. even worse than and, a and child it, actor. <laughs> it really can be tough. Also, yeah. it was tricky because we. You know, they wanted to use a novelty dog, which was a it was some kind of a mastiff of some sort. I forget the name. The Tibetan mastiff, which oh. looked different, but there's a reason people don't use those dogs in movies. There's a yeah. reason people use German shepherds. Yeah, they're well, they're, they're oh yeah, trainable. they're as functional and intelligent yeah, as and, yeah. 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 There, I watch a lot a of that. Uh, certain, yeah, there's a reason certain breeds are not used. Because they're they're just not they're just not the right type, and that wasn't so. It made it really really unnecessarily difficult, but we got through it. Well, yeah, you did you did a fantastic job with that movie because I that's that's Thank really you. a fan favorite. I hear people talk about it all the time when, when we're talking about Child's Play two, and I got to tell you, you know, in this whole franchise now seven films deep, uh, Ch- Child's Play two stands out for so many as their favorite of the franchise. Um, I I think we all played a part in why that's the case. And we were talking earlier about what, 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 how some movies kind of uh, come, come from the studio with ambitions to become a franchise or a sequel and others become the demand of the audience that just need more Mm -hmm. of that story. Uh, And I'm not Mm -hmm. sure when they made the first Child's Play, what their ambition was for it, if it always intended to be more, or if it was the reaction of the uh, audience that well, led to another. I, I, well, I'll tell you, having been there as a co-writer on that one, I can tell you for sure there was no talk ever about it. I don't think they had a clue what they had on their hands. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's evidenced by the stupidity with how, which the way that United Artists lost the franchise. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I don't think they grasped it the, at all. The politics and the behind the scenes uh, drama that must have happened between <laughs> Child's Play 1 and Child's Play 2. Um, I, first of all, I'm glad that I was so uh, not involved in it, yeah. uh, for one thing. <laughs> Because it doesn't yeah. seem like it was easy uh, between the negotiations of the studios and changing so many different different things and just how, how the cast of characters and the production side of things changed so mm-hmm. much uh, between the two. Um, and, and that you were given the reins of this film. Did you... Uh, this was even early on in your directing career, if I'm not, like, if yeah, I'm not mistaken, yeah, this, right? This, 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 this is my second film. Yeah. And I think it's really, it's, I had, when I worked on the first one and I had written the script and it had gotten green lit on the draft that I came up with, David actually had been interested. I almost convinced him that I could direct it. Yeah. And he did actually ask the studio, but they just wouldn't go for it. You know, in hindsight, thank God they didn't because I would not have been ready to do it. Right. I know that. Yeah. You know, I need I needed another film first. But sure. by the time I got to the second one, I'd done a couple of Freddy's Nightmares episodes, like two one hour episodes, and I'd done the movie and I think I'd done another thing for a show called Monsters. And I felt like I was just really ready to, to do that. And yeah. also I had the luxury of knowing the material more intimately because I had spent so much time talking to Don and David about the character and the script. So, sure, you, know, you, I had an, you know, you know, I had a lot of understanding about Chucky as a character. Yeah. You know, and you had a, uh, you were part, you know, part of the family. Oh, Whoa. Hold on a second. This is like, uh, this is like, uh, this is like, a, this is like a, uh, this is like a, a cast of errors here. Uh, uh, Technological errors. Sorry. Um, no, but I was saying you were you were already uh, ingratiated into the family. You were part yeah. part of the family yeah. already, especially with the people that that mattered. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd been there developing the script for number two with Don the whole time. And yeah, I'd actually been part of the. You know, I had actually canvassed David uh, to bring Don on as the writer because I had met him and I just liked him as a person so much. 
When you yeah. had worked on the writing of the first film, was it yeah. uh, was it collaborative or was it hand no, off to one no, person and wait no. for what they do with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was strictly collaborative. I know. I, my understanding is that Don had written the, the original Blood Buddy, right? The impetus for this whole creation, and that uh, Tom had come in and attempted something and given up. Right. I don't know if anyone else had tried something. And then I remember it being told to me, I think they hired me partly because I was cheap because I hadn't done a lot. Yeah. Um, and it was, told, it helps. but they liked yeah. what I had to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they liked what I had to say, but I yeah. think it was also affordable. Uh, and they told me that this is all the money we're going to get. And this is it. If this doesn't work, they're not going to keep going with it. Right. And, you know, it was just one of those things that I could under. I read Don's draft and I really, I got it. I understood it. I was an imaginative kid. I, I, I got, I just like, this makes sense to my brain. You know, yeah. I don't know what that says about me, but it made sense <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I was able to do it. And, you know, I wrote a couple drafts and the draft we handed in, they just said, okay, we're going to green light this thing. And then it went through a, whole bunch of crazy things that I wasn't part of because I left to go do my own film. Yeah. And uh, that that's kind of how that happened. But in the process, I met Dom because the Writers Guild had a thing. I don't know that they do it anymore where you're so, – and I don't even think anybody does it, but I thought you had to, and I'm glad I did, uh, that you're supposed to meet with the, the, the original writer, something like that. So I remember calling Don and he came over to my apartment and we just chatted. So he was aware of what I was doing, even though we didn't work on it together, nor were we really discussing what I was doing. I wasn't really allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But we became, but we became friends. Yeah. And now, yeah. And now three decades later, you still have a, a really nice relationship with Don, which is awesome. You know? Um, yeah. There's, there's something he and I understand this thing in a way that, yeah, well, and you both come at it from a, an actual, uh, real affinity for horror films. Like you love horror, you know, you love horror movies and horror television from your childhood. I mean, I get that impression yeah, that yeah, yeah. you grew I, up I, with I, I those. Realize, yeah, I realize I particularly like monster movies. Yeah, 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 and so does know? so does well, Don. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So I think that's and I and basically Chucky is a monster movie. Absolutely, you know? and. I mean, when I was a kid, I built all, you know, that was in the 60s, the late 60s, and they brought back all the universal monsters, and I built the Wolfman, Dracula, wow, Frankenstein. Yeah. I mean, I spent hours in my room painting the hair and the, you know, yeah. the bolts and all that stuff. So, so I already, yeah. I love that kind of thing already. Yeah, know? so Child's Play 2 was in many ways a dream project to be a part of. Um, you yeah, know, you, it was completely. It was, and you had yeah. access to these incredibly talented puppeteers that were so good at making these monsters come to life. You know, uh, what, yeah, what a great and, thing! And, and, I, and I had that. a lot of I, I, I had a lot of fun with them too because, as a group, I remember collectively I would just refer to them as Chucky when they were working. I wouldn't say <laughs> yeah. you did it. I hey, would just Chucky, say, get over Chucky, here. attack! Yeah. Do yeah. this! Yeah. <laughs> and you know, they got it, so they could kind of like come together and like. Although, as you probably remember, yeah. Chucky was pretty much a spaz. <laughs> yeah, he was. It was took a lot of work to get him to do the right he thing. Was. You know, he, he, he was. He, he, he was had a mind of his own. Tricky. Yeah, yeah. He really would just like spritz <laughs> out, and an arm would shoot out, or this would happen. And yeah, he always seemed to kind of blow it. But uh, there were so many different yeah. challenging scenes too. Like I, re I remember being in the back of that truck that was driving away while Chucky had to mm -hmm. flip off yep, the, and yep. give the middle That's finger right, to yeah. the truck behind yeah. us. Yeah. And that was yeah. not easy to do. That took a lot of time and a lot of work for him to like give the right look, the real yeah. fuck you look as he's flipping them off, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. In a moving truck, the puppeteers all hiding behind those boxes. Because you know what people don't think about now, Alex, because they just don't even remember there was no CG back then. I appreciate it. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, oh, I know. And, and that, here's the uh, eight-year-old so, so, kid. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you couldn't hide anything. You had to physically hide it. Like you, I don't know if you remember that that entire house set was built on a platform so we it, could drill holes through the ground and run the cables up. 
I know. Chucky could be standing in the middle of a room, that kind of thing. I know. There, there were all kinds of challenges. People don't ever, ever kind of realize. And that's why when the question to me always was, were you afraid? It's always kind of so silly because, uh, I, no, I wasn't afraid. Nobody had a chance to be remotely afraid. Yeah. It, was, no. it, was, it was a no. nightmare yeah. trying to get things to even look close to real. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid of the seven dudes controlling the puppet in front yeah. of me. Yeah. So, no, if anything, I remember going to great lengths to try to get you to look afraid. Yeah. You know? Well, I was because having a lot of fun. You know, I was having a lot of fun in that movie. I, I think your, your acting became, was... becomes very good. blase to look you. at this thing. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I was I do remember consciously and working with Margaret, my acting coach, and taking the uh, approach to Andy in Child's Play 2 as just a damaged kid who does not feel much emotion in any direction. Um, so being monotone... Like yeah, being monotone was kind of easy to be consistent with uh i feel like andy was <laughs> and then i just took that and ran with it in cult of chucky now and i added 30 years of damage yeah, psychologically and and whiskey yeah <laughs> i have to yeah, yeah, that, that, by, by the way that scene is very funny i i couldn't stop laughing when i saw that what do you have him in, i think he's in a vice grip or something yeah the torturing hand. i'm seeing a, <laughs> hitting his yeah, face with yeah, a torch yeah, I thought, I thought, yeah. That was that was that was really a great scene. We did that really... in the freezing cold in in Calgary at three a.m. in the morning. We barely got that scene off. Uh, yeah, I remember Don mentioned that to me, but I think people really love that scene. It's funny. It is. You know? It was fun to do. Uh, Joe Davison yeah. in the studio is such a big fan of Man's Best Friend. Why don't you oh, ask man. him a question too about that? Talk yeah, to him well, about that. Okay, yeah, go ahead, gonna, Joe. yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so. What were some of the challenges that you had that are very similar to Chucky? Because, like I asked before, but I didn't realize that the dog wasn't mostly... I figured it was a puppet. Yeah, no, it was mostly... It, there was like six dogs, and they're all different sizes, and they kind of yeah. like to do different things. Uh, I'll tell you, there's one shot in that movie that I still am proud of today, because it's, it's kind of like an impossible shot, particularly with no CG or anything. And yeah. that is, do you remember remember when the two kids are riding the bicycle down the street, chasing the cat, I think, and you have the cat running, the dog chasing the cat, and the kids chasing that. Do you remember that scene? coming, And then the cat runs up the tree and the dog eats it. I totally remember yeah, that, that scene. Whole yeah. 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 But there's there's a shot where you're looking down the street and you literally see a cat coming at you. Then you see a dog chasing it and you see two kids on bicycles following. Right, right. And I've got to tell you, as a director, those are like three things you don't want in the same shot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because the cat's got to go a certain way. The dog's got to go a certain way. The kids have to go a certain way. And when that came together, I was ecstatic. It was like, Wow. You know, I mean, that's something that's like that's like moments, legendary, man. though, to think yeah. about. I, I was able to direct a cat, a dog and a child in the same scene. Yeah, yeah. All, all, <laughs> yeah. All of the, all, and, and they're on bicycles. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and moving. This is like. And moving all yeah. at the same time. And, and it yeah. actually came together just right. And it was. Yeah. So that sort of thing that, that was, it had those kind of challenges. The other thing, though, is I now cannot watch any dog or or animal movies without realizing the animal's really never looking at the person. He's <laughs> yeah, looking yeah, at yeah. a trainer with a piece yeah, of food yeah. behind the sofa or wherever he's standing. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to the emotionally eye connect eye. when you know they're looking at a treat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, they're just slightly off, you know. But I think they have done a lot. I don't know if you saw any of the 10.5 uh, mini series I did for NBC. I didn't. I looked up big... stuff about it today when I was looking things up about you, actually, but uh, I, I didn't get to see that yet. Yeah, it's just, just massive, crazy. I seem to every movie I get seems to be really ridiculously impossible yeah. in terms of the things that, things that <laughs> the have challenges are just incredible. Yeah, yeah. always. I, yeah. Ne I never get like an easy one. It's Little love story like... between two people in a yeah. park. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the truth of it is, I realized I would be bored with that. I'm not that interested in that. I'm much more interested in pulling off the impossible. Yeah. You know, it's it's just more fun. That's great. And that... it's, you know. 
I, I love well, that. I, I love that you uh, take the challenge. You'd have to. It's the only way, you know. And and like I said, Child's Play 2, I know, was left a big impact on fans. It's talked about as their favorite of the franchise by so yeah, many. And everything needs to work, you know, for a film to last three decades like this and for yeah. people to still give a shit about the story. Those first yeah, couple I, films were meant everything. Yeah, I, I I had no idea people felt that way about it, and Don kept telling me, and it's 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 nice, it's gratifying that people still enjoy it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was made with love. It sounds silly, it's a horror movie, but it was made with love. Yeah, and you, you also know? had such fun set design to work with. The second half, or the you know the last. 30 minutes yep, of the film factory. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people were curious how many of those boxes you think there were. And we're, God, are we talking lot. hundreds? I, I, there were hundreds. And yeah. all I know is I wish I'd kept some. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> they all became worth like thousands of dollars each. Yeah. Uh, God, a, I mean, a lot of them were, there were some that were like half a doll in there with actual yeah. real clothes on it. And then there's some that they were just yeah. painted on, but even the a paint, a lot of them were just, yeah, a lot Painted. of silk screened off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they, but, it looked, but, but even it looked those real. are going for a lot of money, yeah. And I'm I do remember sure the puppeteers or someone making a massive maze out of those boxes. Yeah. Like a real yep. elaborate, serious maze. Not like yeah. a joke maze, yeah. like a like a serious, no. like a real maze. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and we were really... Yep. Yeah. Well, that's because we, they went through it in the end, the whole chase. We were really ah. fortunate... To have an incredible steady cam operator. I forget his name, and he had like a—I don't remember if he had a bicycle or what—but he was. He came in and he was so good. We were able to bang that out. Yeah. And otherwise, we would have just gotten buried. He was really, really, really masterful. You there, know, which is really nice. There was another uh, very interesting uh, privilege for us in making that film, which was well. First of all, besides the fact that. It was on the Universal lot at the same time that they were making Back to the Future 2 and 3, which is just the mm-hmm. coolest thing ever. Because, uh, like, yeah. the, you know, the DeLorean was just hanging around. I got to sit well, in that's it. Right. That's right. I got that's to go walk. Right. I had yeah. lunch with Michael J. Fox, which meant everything to me at the time. But I, in addition to that, the, the soundstage that we were working on was the old mm-hmm. Phantom of the Opera mm-hmm. soundstage. Mm-hmm. So not only was it rumored to be intensely haunted, which I guess is just fun to say to people, but the like my I even I remember the balconies and like the set design was still yep. there. There were there was still a piece of it there, yeah. yeah. And you may not know may not remember this, but I'm sure you were in my director's office in pre production at some point. Yeah. Before we started shooting. That I believe was Alfred Hitchcock's office. Or oh, wow. it was right oh, next to Alfred Hitchcock's office awesome. at one point, wow. which was pretty amazing. Yeah, what Little did I know like? that it was a fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. felt I bet. inspired. You know, I loved being on that lot. It was just it's like a felt like a real movie lot. Yeah, you know? uh, it was, We had a lot of fun things to do and, and and a lot of really fun scenes. That scene where I got to melt Chucky down with that hot wax. Which wasn't really oh, hot, yeah. but but uh, <laughs> uh, you know Don Don Mancini. See, there's still not like a c- collector's edition behind the scenes Child's Play two DVD Blu-ray set, which there should be. I I don't know what the holdup is or what needs to happen to make that happen, but I know. D- Don yeah, has like hours Don of incredible footage. Yeah. yeah, I have I like know. thirty minutes of it uh, that I wish I could just put on. Tri- I wish I could put it on the Final Note YouTube channel, but. Uh, it's it's his. They got to figure out what they're going to do with it because he's got so much great stuff of us uh, filming and and you know uh, like a camcorder rolling while we're filming and then the setups yeah. in between scenes and us cracking up. Yeah. There's a scene of you teaching me how to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, come on, that, that's gold. I, 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 I haven't seen any of that. I'd love to. It's gold. You know? uh, I have uh, yeah. copies of it that I tried to like tape the uh, tape the television. You know, I have the studio down here, and it's a production studio. And one of the things that my mother encourages me to do, because I do think it's a good idea, is to do those uh, transfers for people. Like, I can take mm. your old format VHSs or whatever and give you a DVD. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, I need to find someone to do that for me. And I hear you got to mail it away to people, and that's scary. I don't want to do that, you know? What are you trying to do? Sorry, I was reading comments. I'm trying to, to take old footage, like... 
that I have on a VHS tape yep. and put it on, and not even a DVD, but like digital to have it digital, so I could put mm -hmm. it online. Oh, yeah, we can, do, we can do that right down the street. All right, all yeah. right. Yeah. Joe knows the place to yeah. go to. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. We'll get it done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I would yeah, love I to do that, and hopefully, we get to do a commentary on it together and stuff. That yeah. would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it really is a shame that he has all that footage, and you've got some, and it's just not. Yeah. I know we got to get it out there. Fans would love it. It's really, yeah. really funny, and Christine's great in it and cracking up after every uh, take. And yeah, oh yeah, you know what? You know what I found the other day uh, in one of my boxes is the actual original storyboards from Child's Play Two. Oh wow! Yeah, which are actually pretty cool. They're like uh, a lot of them are in color, and there was the movie. You know, I remember spending days and days and days with a storyboard artist trying to explain what I wanted and this and that. And it's pretty cool. Maybe yeah. someday I'll try to get that put together and get it out there. Uh, fans love this stuff, you know? They just really do. And I, I don't blame them. Yeah. yeah. Turn it into a book. Yeah. It's a whole thing. We got to get, like, you know, yeah. got to get permission and shit. We got to figure so, out so, what so, we're so, allowed to do. So, 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 point, so speaking of anything. that. Yeah. So speaking of it, Alex, uh, is it the, what is it? Is it 2020 going to be the uh, anniversary of Child's Play 2? Yeah, it's coming up. 30-year anniversary well, next year. Wow. Well, you've got to arrange some uh, conventions for us. I know. I know. I think 2020 will be a big year for the convention scene for us. You know, you, you got to come down with that. Hopefully, I can uh, make that happen with Lloyd from Texas Frightmare because uh, we had such a blast for the Child's Play 1 reunion. Uh, if, he, right. if he's down to do it. You would absolutely have to come. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you really, mm -hmm. you know, I know you've, you, you've just started doing a couple of conventions and meeting this uh, in incredibly uh, devoted, uh, diehard horror fan base in person. I love them. It's, I love them. it's quite a trip, huh? I really, I really, really enjoyed it. it yeah, was, me too. It's a sh it was really nice for me just to see that something I made could just make people happy. <laughs> it's like, that's it. It makes them happy, you know. I imagine that's what's pretty wrong satisfying. with that. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. And and I'm a fan of things, you know. I uh, mm -hmm. first of all, I I might not be the biggest horror fan, but I've gotten to meet a, a bunch of people from doing these conventions that were people I've always wanted to meet, and I know what that's like. Yeah. I'm freaking Kiefer Sutherland started doing them. I need to meet him at a convention. Like, I would mm -hmm. absolutely love I, that. I met Billy Zane at the last one, and I loved yeah. Him. I, I told you I embarrassed myself in front of him. I, I fucked up. Him. I thought he was in an episode of Twenty Four or in a season of Twenty Four, and he wasn't. So I was, was I was the Maslow asshole who was like, "Oh, I loved you in Twenty Four. Oh, I wasn't in that show. Oh, thanks. All right, sorry. That happens." He's like, "I love you in Friday the 13th. Yeah, yeah. He's he's there for the seventy movies on his credits, and I name one thing he wasn't in. It's not your fault, man. Yeah, you we're drunk. Oh well, it happens." <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope that the, uh, television series, uh, gets to happen in full force and the family mm -hmm. gets to come back together and, uh, work on some things. That would be really cool. Who, who, who knows where this will all lead? I think it's amazing that, uh, fans are still so, so interested in this story and intrigued. Uh, and even though, you know, there's haters out there that want to talk shit all the time, which just happens inevitably, uh, we, we really do have a, such a, a widespread range of fans that were uh, made a connection to this franchise. I think it's just because mm -hmm. they were always afraid of inanimate things coming to life and killing them when they were kids. Oh, man, I love and we it. touched on it deep, but 30 years later and they still care. So it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 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 a yeah. it's a great family to be a part of. And it, I'm definitely I, I happy we got to like, reconnect like as well. Says, man, it's it's a monster. So. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm also a huge fan of monster movies, Creature from the Black Lagoon, yeah. you know, uh, The Monster Squad, did you, you know, from the 80s. Sure. That's, yeah, I'd love, to me, I love that, that was a retro telling of Universal's ultimate scares. Yeah. It was all of them. It was yeah. Frankenstein and Dracula. Yeah. And, yeah. So I, those movies are what I really interest and truly inspire me, those monster films. Yeah, right? yeah. Especially Creature from the yeah. Black Lagoon. So... Now, uh, speaking, speaking of Creature from the Black Lagoon, have you, you guys, I'm sure, have been to Wakula Hot Springs? Oh, down Wakula here? Springs? 
the yeah, the hot springs down here. I've not been yet. Yeah, no. I, well, I grew up in them. I know. I hear they're great. I, I got to check them out. Yeah, I grew well, up. Well, it's, it's 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 actually not hot. It's just I think it's just called Wakula Springs. Yeah, and that's where they shot Creature from yeah. the Black. Oh wow. Yeah, I I, oh, lived, okay. right, I grew up right near there. They shot Tarzan there. Did you ever get Creature? Yep. Yeah, did Did you ever go to it? Oh to yeah. The springs. Yeah. It's so it's so friggin' beautiful. Most of my yeah. high school yeah. summers were so spent beautiful. there with girls I couldn't even talk to. And they, and they what? turned it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, they yeah. shot creature for the Black Lagoon here. Blah, 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 blah. And they're like, I'm going to It didn't help, huh? Joe's yeah. a fucking nerd. It didn't work. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, hey, Josh, shut up. I love you, Betty. <laughs> Where's Todd? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, John, I I hope I get to see you some more. I I, I get to come out to LA uh, every now and then, but hopefully we'll start doing some conventions together. I I always try yeah. to uh, uh, encourage these convention promoters to bring us all together because it, it's always fun to do a reunion type of show, and and fans really appreciate appreciate it. it makes a great yep. photo op with the doll. So. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, that would be I'm fun. Totally, I'm to, I'm totally up for it, and it's really been great to reconnect with you. It's kind of, it's really fun. It's yeah. really great. I'm glad to. I'm really happy to see how well you turned out. Yeah, I didn't warp you in any Chuck, way. Chuck, you didn't That's fuck nice. me up too much. No, yeah, no, you, you didn't do any all. serious damage to me. That's not bad. <laughs> I mean, some, some, but you know, just, just some the nine inch nails obsession. Well, that's that's that somehow it's related to it. Yeah, you might have to try to understand what that means. Yeah, that might, might uh, <laughs> that might uh, shed light on some darker layers, I guess. Next week, but uh, Dr. yeah, yeah, Phil. yeah. We'll see how many uh, episodes of this show I do, and soon I'll I'll unravel my uh, all my yeah. darkness. He that opens leads up to... a little bit each. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. Each I'm only opens. opening up mm-hmm. slightly here. I'm an introvert who shouldn't even be talking to anybody. Let alone a microphone in my face so right <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're doing we're right, doing the great. best but john thank you for chatting uh i i really sure, appreciate alex. it i hope to see more of you soon and uh yeah. and just know that the fans are, are super super appreciative of your work as someone who's been doing these conventions for 15 years and meeting thousands of uh really really huge uh massive chucky fans and even even casual fans that have just the the highest regards for part two. I'm a casual fan. Yeah, this casual fan. Yeah. yeah. I, speaking of Nine Inch Nails, I was at a at a Nine Inch Nails concert last year, and I had seats, which I never get. I'm always barrier, like right in the front. I get there early and wait to be in the front. But this was an all seated venue, and right before they go on, the guy behind me says to his friend, "I guess I'm what you'd call a casual Nine Inch Nails fan." <laughs> and I just smack myself in the head like, "Oh shit." <laughs> It's going to be one of those nights. And, of course, they talk through the entire fucking show. Uh, talk mm, talk through Hurt. Yeah. Talk through something I can never have. Just the songs that you should never talk through. Oh, God. Casual It's a good thing you've seen you them never like hear that. times. It's a good time I've seen them 70 <laughs> times in concert. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do, you, do you connect with Trent in the audience? Does he look at you and be like, oh, there's Alex? We've had our moments. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I've oh. been piggied three times. Trent is yeah. Alex's only nine Benny. Nails fans. I have to figure that yeah. that one out. Trent just turns to everyone else. He's like, Alex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's that fucking <laughs> lunatic's here again. Yeah. Someone tell yeah. him stop sending me news. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I, all right, John. Thank, thanks again. Thanks so much, and we'll we'll talk some sometime soon. It was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yep. It was fun listening. Thank you, my friend. All right. Take care, okay, bud. Bye. Bye. Bye.